Let's talk about optimizing OBS Studio so that your stream runs as smooth as possible. This video is going to go through all the settings that you're going to need to get your OBS optimized the best way it can so that your stream runs smooth. So we'll be focusing mainly on stream settings and video settings with a few other things that I'd like to show that'll help your viewers with their experience. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Oom.tv provides overlays, alerts, panels, and more to level up your live stream and give it the custom look you strive for. With hundreds of options, you can find a look that matches your style and enhances your viewer experience, like one of my favorites, the Modern Series Stream Package. Each package provides scene overlays and modular assets that you can add or remove as needed to customize for your own custom look. And they're fully integrated with Stream Elements, Stream Labs, and all the major streaming platforms. Click on the affiliate links below and save 50% by using code TFS at checkout. Out. Okay, so let's talk about OBS and get into the settings here. And I'm going to concentrate on two main areas, and that is going to be the output and the video settings. We'll go over some additional things and advanced audio and that sort of thing for your stream. But let's go ahead and get into settings here. Now, first of all, in the general settings, especially if you have OBS 27.2, there's going to be an additional option here to not show the OBS within your window and it'll hide OBS so that you don't have that tunnel vision kind of thing. I don't have that updated on the game PC right now, but and if you have it it'll be in this little top little general area here another thing you might want to enable inside of general is snap source alignment if you're uh, going to be aligning sources and you want something in the center it'll snap to center it'll also snap on the uh, vertical if you know too so if you want to have something centered horizontally and vertically uh, you can do that but it's a real nice little feature and i definitely recommend you doing that other than that uh, for the streaming you want to have show confirmation dialog for streaming setup and also for stopping stream that way if you accidentally hit the stream button say on your stream deck or something like that if you're using touch portal you accidentally hit the stream button you're not streaming it's going to pop a confirmation up before that so that's a nice little extra layer of protection uh you don't want to be on get you know on a youtube highlights where you're streaming accidentally and somebody sees something you shouldn't be seeing so other than that next thing is your stream here uh, you go to stream your service, most people are probably going to be using Twitch or YouTube. Uh, we'll select Twitch here. Um, you can connect your account using the API, which is definitely recommended because then your stream chat and everything will pop up here inside of OBS Studio. Or if you have a dedicated stream key, this is how you would enter the stream key right there. Okay. Output. Now, this is where we're going to talk about streaming. You've got four different tabs here that you can select. But mainly for streaming, what we're going to talk about is these settings here is, and it's very important. So first, audio track one is the default audio track for live stream. If you use NDI, the NDI audio also comes off of track one. So I definitely recommend you use track one for your live streaming. And we'll go into how you add all of your different audio sources to track one here in a second. Your encoder options, you have a couple different options here. Most people are going to have X264 or NVENC. You may also have the AMF, I think is the AMD version of uh, hardware encoding, or you may have QuickSync, which is the Intel hardware encoder. So you do have the option to use any of those. You obviously get the best quality out of NVENC when it comes to all the hardware encoders or software encoding is where you're going to get the maximum quality, but that also takes a ton of CPU. So I definitely recommend you using NVENC if you cannot encode lower than the medium setting for your preset. So let's talk about NVENC because this is what most people are going to be using, especially if you're doing single PC streaming and gaming. So your NVENC encoder, most people are going to be able to now use the new encoding and you can even if you have an older GPU encoder, you can still use the new NVENC. But definitely take advantage of it. If you have a Turing encoder, this would be a GTX 50, 1650 Super and up. Those have the Turing encoding built in, so you will really get good quality out of that rate control you want to use constant bit rate for streaming you don't want to even mess with any of these other ones uh, all of these 
you know, if you were to use any of these could throw your bit rate over the maximum bit rate that is allowed by your service. And then your stream would get throttled. You do not want to do that. What will happen in Twitch is they will actually lower your resolution setting down from say 1080p down to 720p. You know, your viewers won't be able to go any higher than 720p, even though you have 1080p selected as your output resolution. So leave it CBR. Max bit rate, uh, I think things have kind of changed a little bit. Most people nowadays should be able to handle uh, the maximum bit rate. If you're a brand new streamer, you may want to lower this to maximize the amount of viewers that you can get, especially if you have a lot of mobile viewers. But for the most part, most people can handle bit rate now, especially if you're you, if you're streaming on something like YouTube or Facebook, it doesn't even matter. This is strictly for Twitch, okay? If you're streaming YouTube, send all the bit rate you, you can handle. The rule of thumb though, if you're limited in upload bandwidth, do 75% of your upload speed up to the maximum that is allowed by the service provider. Now keyframes here, you want to take this and go to two. You do not want to leave it in auto, set it to two. You can leave it in auto if you're recording. Preset quality, most people should be able to do quality. Um, you can also do max quality. The only difference between the two is quality is a one pass encoding and max quality is a two pass. It's your choice choose it whatever you want i you know i don't really see much of a difference in quality and max quality to be honest with you now i have high profile set um you can go to main if you want i do not recommend using baseline but use main or high profile if you're going to be doing especially if you're doing uh 1440p and up you definitely want to use high profile for streaming here you do not want to use look ahead look ahead is dynamic b frames so you want to leave that off because you want to have your b frame set to uh, a maximum of two you do not want if you set like select look ahead it's going to go up to four so two is the max that the stream service providers normally recommend uh, you can go lower than that down you can actually select zero um, if you want to and if you're using a low latency you definitely want to do that you know something like twitch now has low latency recording where, you, where your, your chatters can see you and you know and respond in a matter of seconds to what your what the, you know they're seeing compared to you and and I think Mixer, when they were out and they had the faster than light, it was like the latency was near zero and you had to run zero B frames for that to work properly. So in any case, that's what that does. You definitely do not want to go over to though. All right, now video settings here. Now video is important. Now, if you are dual PC live streaming and recording using OBS at the same time, which a lot of people are doing now for their YouTube content, you want to use the output scale resolution here you want that to match your canvas and then in the output this is where you will rescale your output all right because this will then rescale your stream down to whatever your stream resolution is while you can record at your base resolution and frame rate the big difference here though is that this uses your gpu to do the downscaling here this uses your cpu okay so keep that in mind this is going to add additional cpu load not a ton but it does add some but if you're not dual streaming and recording then you want to downscale from here okay and most people this is probably what you're going to want to do downscale filters you want to use either bicubic or lanscos uh, you're really not going to see much of a difference between the two. Two Lanskos is actually designed as an upscaler, so if you want to upscale from 1080p up to 4K, you want to use definitely use Lanskos. Uh, by cubic, you could definitely use uh, either one though; it works fine for downscaling. And frame rates, you want to use either 30 or 60, or you know 59.94, you know, or wherever you're at in the, in the world. Uh, your format you want to use, but most people are going to use either 30 or 60. You want to do a derivative of whatever your monitor resolution or monitor refresh rate is. Uh, so, you know, 120, uh, 60, 30, you want, you definitely don't want to get into the 48, uh, for instance, probably not a good idea because then you can start having some frame issues uh, with your recording, with your streaming. You may not see it personally as far as in their stats, but it, it, it may show up on your stream. So you definitely want to try to 
use a a derivative of whatever your fresh rate is here and most people like i said will use either 30 or 60. Uh, 60 is the max that stream service providers allow so most people are going to try to use 60 if you can this will add a lot of load though so what you want to do is if you're having a lot of encoding issues and or rendering issues you may want to drop this down to 30 and that will relieve some of that cpu load or gpu load that you're going to have and then you know you'll have a smoother stream although you won't be running at 60 frames and then advanced here uh you definitely want to run your process process priority to high you got your renderer here most people are going to leave this at direct you know direct 3d 11 color format for streaming you're going to want to use nv12 for recording that's when you get into these different color formats i444 is obviously the the highest uh, and rgb is the highest levels of color format that you'll get um, so if you're wanting to really do a, a high quality high resolution recording and you have an encoder that can handle this uh, which some of the newer uh elgato captures and 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 those other different high quality capture cards have the ability to do i444 or i420 uh take that take advantage of that but for streaming nv12 all right color space here you want to look, have it at 709 and then for your sources there your color range you'll be full here you do not want to use partial or you do not want to use full down here for your different sources because that'll give you this kind of foggy hazy look that does not look good another thing here that i like to use is i like to use dynamic bitrate so this is going to allow your viewers if you have some degradation between you and the twitch servers or whatever uh, or your your network itself starts having some issues and you can't handle the same bit rate that you're sending obs will then throttle your bit rate down so that your video to your viewers stays nice and smooth but you will lose quality i think that's a better option than if you just keep sending max bit rate and then they start buffering on their end because they're going to get frustrated and leave uh, they'll much more likely stick around if they just have a reduction in quality but they still have a smooth video feed also i have enabled browser source hardware acceleration enabled to maximize the load off of my cpu and allow my gpu to do a lot of this work because it's optimized to do that our last thing i wanted to talk about is advanced audio settings so go down to advanced audio properties here and this is where you go and select your tracks for your stream now here they all are selected by default so if there's a track that you do not want to go to your stream you need to unselect that here again remember i said re i recommended leaving your stream track as track one so all these sources right now are going to my stream track and if you're recording then this is where you can go get into multi-track recording and selecting all these different sources on their own dedicated track up to a maximum of six but this is generally what people are going to want to do they can go in and turn off the sources necessary if they do not want them in there and you can see all the sources here and these are just the active sources I have on my stream currently. Uh, monitor off is just going to go to your live stream for your viewers. Monitor only goes just to your headphones and then monitor and output does both. Okay, so there is some things that you may want to monitor only, like alerts, for instance, if you don't want those going to your stream, you know, or you can do monitor and output on both. If you want people to use, uh, hear your alerts, uh, but you want to also be able to hear them, then you want to do monitor and output. Okay, so those are options there. But the big thing here is your tracks so that you know that, you know, you have all the sources selected to your stream that you want going. And then the ones that you don't, of course, you just uncheck them. All right, guys, that is your OBS stream settings. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I think this will help you out to get you a nice looking professional and smooth running live stream for your viewers. Now, you may have some issues with optimization and there are ways that you can tune obs and i have a video that i will show you right here so just watch this video to help you with optimizing your live stream if you have a bunch of sources running and it'll be five different ways that you can reduce different types of lag on obs